We're at Discovery Times Square, where right now there is an absolutely fantastic exhibit of the Dead Sea Scrolls going on. And not only that, but actually we have here a tremendous collection of pottery and other material from the first temple period. That is from the 9th, 8th, 7th centuries BCE, the period of the biblical prophets. So in a certain sense, at this exhibit, you get the chance to descend into the first period, you get the chance to descend into the first temple period, and then to enter an entire room that's for the second temple period, where you've got a lot of really important objects and the opportunity to see 10 fragments of the Dead Sea Scrolls, really the most important archeological discovery of our time. The Dead Sea Scrolls are the remnants of what in antiquity would have been about 900 complete scrolls. Now these fragmentary documents really represent three types of literature. There's material from the Bible, the Tanakh, of which we have some, we have some part of every single book except for the book of Esther. Then we have what we call apocryphal texts, which are books like the Bible and about the Bible, and this is another third of the corpus more or less. And the final third of the corpus is the literature of the sectarian group which most scholars identify with the Essenes, that gathered this material at the site of Qumran and placed it into these caves. These manuscripts basically were discovered starting when the Bedouin boy found, in the famous story, he was following a goat, and found scrolls in 1947, and the discovery continued into the 50s. The Dead Sea Scroll sect expected that there would be a great war in the end of days, between the sons of light and the sons of darkness, and that that war, they thought, would bring the Messiah. Probably this text was written before the Romans conquered Israel in 63 BCE. Now, also, one of the things that happened all the time in ancient times, as we now know from the Dead Sea Scrolls, is that various sort of apocryphal books were written to imitate the biblical books. This was mostly done in the third, second, first centuries BCE. And here we have an apocryphal lamentations, a kind of adaptation of the biblical book of Eicha. And when you look at this poem, you see the extent to which they continued to mourn the destruction of the temple. We have a lot of refuge caves that were found in the area of the Judean desert. And one of the things that was found there is the minor prophets, the Treasar, in Greek translation. Now this is actually a very special text because in this text you see an adaptation from what was the Greek translation of the Septuagint towards a translation that more accurately reflects the Hebrew of what we call the Masoretic text, which is the authoritative Bible that was used by the Jews at that time. So here you can see that very process in the way this Greek translation was modified. But at the same time, it reminds us that many Jews, even in the land of Israel in ancient times, say in the first century CE, needed a Greek translation to be able to understand the Bible. Now related to this are a whole bunch of prayers and liturgies. One of these is found in a text that here they gave the title Book of War. And you get a sense from this of the types of praise of God that they expected would be associated with that war in the end of days. The Dead Sea Scrolls sectarians had a way of commenting on the Bible called Pesher. Pesher is an interpretation in which the Bible is interpreted as reflecting the days of the sectarians of the second and first centuries BCE and the first century CE. And here we have a piece of the book of Isaiah, Yeshayahu, which is being interpreted, but it's not just any piece, it's the important passage about the Messiah, that a shoot will issue from the stump of Jesse and a bud from its roots. And this passage is interpreted as indicating that the Messiah, son of David, will come and crush all the enemies of Israel and redeem them. Here we have a very special piece of a scroll of Leviticus. This is a scroll of Leviticus which is virtually the same as the Leviticus that we have letter for letter. The only difference is that when you take a look at this text you see that it's written in the old Hebrew script. The script that was used up to the 5th century BCE. And the Talmud tells us that this script was changed into the square script that we use today, a version of which most of the scrolls are written in. And the final item that we have here is called the community rule. And the community rule 
is a text which guided the members of the Qumran sect from sometime at the end of the second century BCE, running through the destruction, because we think that Qumran was destroyed in 68 CE, and Qumran is that place where the manuscripts were found. So in any case, this text called The Rule of the Community tells us how you get into the group, how they manage their affairs, what type of offenses were punishable, and furthermore, it also tells us the basic beliefs of the sect, which include this absolute predestination idea and also the notion that the world is sharply divided between sons of light and darkness, those who are the members of this group and everybody else outside. The scrolls constitute an amazing source for understanding the history of Judaism because they help us to fill in the nature of the debate and the discussion that was going on in the years after the close of the Bible until we get to rabbinic literature. And what we find out is that there were all kinds of religious ferments going on at this time. Before that, we knew about the political history because we have great sources. We have Maccabees 1 and 2 and we have Josephus. And from this, we had tremendous amount of information about political history. But now we're able to fill in the religious history. And along with archaeology and Talmudic sources and all the rest of this material, we could really get an amazing picture of what was going on. Now, I know the scrolls are also important for Christians. Because if you want to really understand the New Testament, you have to know about the Jewish background of what was going on before. And the scrolls give us an opportunity to understand that. Now here's something really interesting. We learn from the scrolls about various ideas that didn't make it into Judaism. Because in the scrolls, on the one hand, we have all these standard Jewish practices. You have even mention of the reading of the Shema. You have tefillin, phylacteries there. You've got all this stuff which is mainstream Judaism really. And then at the same time, the scroll sect has some ideas, like the idea that the words of the prophets are literally happening in their time, that really are more closely associated with the development of early Christianity. But when you take all this together, what it really means is that the scrolls are an unbelievable set of texts to understand the history of the whole basis of our Western civilization. And I think that's one of the reasons why they've had so much interest and gotten so much attention since their initial discovery.